speak up, lead and learn to pass it on. In case you're one of the few people in District 30 that has never heard of Jerry Evans, <laughs> he's a distinguished Toastmaster. He's the immediate past District 30 Club Extension Chair. In case you're not aware of that, that is the person for District 30 who helps establish clubs throughout the district. He's a passionate speaker, entrepreneur, and self-proclaimed addict for communication, public speaking, and improving leadership skills. He's a proud member of Toastmasters International and has won numerous awards throughout his seven-year journey in District 30 Toastmasters, including Toastmaster of the Year twice and Area Governor of the Year. Now it's Area Director. He earned his Distinguished Toastmaster Award in 2011, which is the highest educational achievement that any Toastmaster can earn. He's a member of four Toastmasters clubs, and one is actually in another district. On what end, yes, what end, yes. I'm gonna check out the competition. Um, uh, and he's also a member, and it was the founding member of Toastmasters on Purpose, which is the only advanced club in the Northwest suburbs. He definitely walks the talk. He's held almost every officer leadership position in Toastmasters from serving as president of multiple clubs and every other officer except secretary and treasurer. I guess they don't want him handling the money. <laughs> he has served as district conference chair to Toastmasters uh, Leadership Institute, the TLI. Yeah, Associate Dean of Education and in conducting special district communication and leadership events and presenter at various district con conferences. So if you didn't already know Jerry Evans, I would like to warmly welcome Jerry Evans. Stand up, speak up, lead, and learn to pass it on. I just wanted to make sure that the technology was working. For those of you who do a lot of presentations, technology never, ever, ever fails us, does it? It always works, no matter how much you prepare. Before we get into the real meat and potatoes of this, I love what Keith said in his last session, is that we want this, and I say we, Keith, we want this to be a hands-on section. That means that I'm not just here to lecture to you and provide information to you because Remember, information is never enough, is it? It's what you do with the information, not here at the TLI. And for me, TLI stands for Toastmasters Leave Inspired. Can we agree with that? Because you get a nugget of wisdom that you can take back to your clubs, you can take back to your members, you can share it with other leaders, and it can help them have a better Toastmaster experience. It can help all of us, we, have a better Toastmaster experience. How many of you know what vision is? Every hand in the room should go up when we talk about vision. Well, here's what I want you to shift your vision today. First of all, get it really in focus and shift it from a me-opic vision to a we-opic vision. Because it's about we. It's never about me. It's never about you. It's never about you. It's about we. And when we shift our focus into a we optic vision, we're able to gain more clarity. We're able to gain more confidence that we can share with our membership. We can share with other leaders. And it shifts the focus away when we get up as we get into the presentation, away from just thinking about I, 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 me, 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 me. I love it in Ellen Schnur's session on improv because... How many of you were in Ellen's session for improv? Okay, quite a few of you. Well, you know, she talked about the Minions, and that's why I played Happy, the Minions song, Happy, to tie it back to Ellen when she was talking about that. And I told her, I said, she see when she came to this session how it would be related. So the four things I want you to take away today is I want you to think about as we go through this, when we talk about stand up, speak up, lead, and learn, what that means to each and every one of you. 
And then the last portion of it is pass it on. I love what Dr. Smedley said because he said, we learn best in moments of fun and enjoyment. So I want you to have fun this afternoon. I want you to learn a lot. And as we go through this, if you think of something, an idea that you can share with the rest of the group, don't hesitate to interrupt me briefly so we can address that because I do not like to leave Q&A to the very end. I want to give you full value for the 45 minutes that you're investing this afternoon because that's our most valuable resource, is our time. We can never get back that time. So think of it as an investment this afternoon. And the portion of this, as we get to the very end of it, is I want you to reflect on it and then what you take back to your clubs and really implement going back to the information and the knowledge. It's what can you take away from this and what can you immediately implement, just like Keith gave you three tips in his session, because what you will take away will be invaluable. And the seven year journey that I've had the pleasure of in Toastmasters these past seven years, not that I'm counting 2,555 days, 3,679,200 seconds, but in that seven year span, it's truly been a journey of learning. And can you imagine a group of us who come together at a TLI that have a passion for learning, leadership, and public speaking, who are all totally committed to excellence and to continually growing and improving their best lives. I believe that all of you, there's a reason why you're here today. Can we agree with that? Yes and yes? Awesome, all right, let's get going. So first, let's talk about stand up. Step one, he said this in his session. In order for us to have any Toastmaster experience, what do we have to do? Show up. Show up. But here's the question. Donna, who are you showing up as? Are you showing up as you or just for you? Or is it you showing up for someone else? And that's it, is that we don't just show up for us, is I want to show up for you, and you are. Sandra. Sandra? Yes. So if Sandra's giving a presentation, but I'm just all about Jerry, I'm just all about me, am I really showing up for Sandra? No, I'm not, am I? So when we show up, we show up for one another, not just for ourselves. Because when you just show up as you, you're showing up in a selfish kind of way versus showing up selflessly. Because I show up for you, I show up for you, I show up for you. And we give each other a gift. Dr. Smedley said that the greatest gift we can give one another is the present of our attention. To be fully present. Because all the electronic technology devices that we all have, smartphones, not so smartphones, or like to refer them to interrupt us, electronic us, distract us. <laughs> IEGs for sure, those of you who've been in the military, they're not improvised explosive devices. But in some sense, we get attached to those, and I know all of you experience this. You have a member that's sitting in a meeting, and they're texting, they're emailing, of course about Toastmasters, right? <laughs> not about anything else that's going on in their lives. So showing up is really important when we show up for one another. We'll come back to that. So when we don't show up, what happens? We wind up in a room of empty chairs because nobody shows up. Or they just show up for themselves. We don't show up for one another. So just really think about that and ask yourself the question, are you showing up for you? Are you showing up for your club? You showing up for your other members? Are you showing your support for each other? Just reflect on that. Stand up. And Ellen in her session, we're talking about improv. You know, we have to get out of our comfort zone, and then we make the transition to the TMZ zone. And that's the transformation zone. And I'm not talking about stand-up comedy. Because we've shown up, right? 
We've shown up for the meeting. And even before stand-up is we have to sign up. Because how many times do you have an agenda? When Keith was talking about agenda in his session, and we're trying to fill our agenda, we're trying to get members to sign up before they show up. So if they don't sign up, they don't show up. They can't really stand up, can they? But here's what I want you to think about when it comes to stand up. What do you stand for? And I'm relating it to what is your standards? What standards are you standing up for? Are you standing up for excellence? Because excellence is a guilty pleasure. It really is. Because for those of you that really delve into Toastmasters International, and we talk about the number of CCs, and we talk about the number of CLs, and Donna, don't excommunicate me from Toastmasters when I share this with everyone, okay? Can we please not do that? Okay, close your ears. But the number, the tagline is what at Toastmasters? What's the tagline at Toastmasters? Where leaders are made. How many leaders do we have in the room? Okay, keep your hands up for a minute. No, no more. How many of you have your CL? Look around the room. So there's an opportunity there to practice your leadership skills by completing your CL. Because worldwide, there are less than, don't fall off your seat now, there are less than 6,000 members that complete a CL. Wow. Out of how many? Over 300,000 members. Do the math. That's less than 3%. Repeat that, Jerry. Repeat that, Jerry. The percentage is 2.78% to be exact. Not that I'm counting. It's about 5,500 people that complete a CL. And that's, you can go on the Toastmaster website, you can check my map. But here's the thing, on the communication side of it, how many Toastmasters do you think complete a CC award every year? Anybody, percentage wise, give me percentage number, yes sir, your name is? Larry. Larry. 10%. 10%, okay. Any other guesses? Say about three. Three 3%, okay. 30%? That would be fantastic if there were 30%. Yes, Marianne. Pardon? 20%. 20%? 8. James? 5%. 5%. Okay, we're getting better. We're getting better. Keith? 1%? No, yes, sir. 25? Okay, we've gone from what percentage to what percentage? From 1% to what? 30? 30%? So if it were 30%, out of, let's say, 313,000 members, how many CCs would that be? Roughly. Close enough for government work. <laughs> Pardon me? 93,000. Okay, just for sake of this presentation, 93,000 members achieving a CC. 27,500 people. That's less than 8%. So as you go back to your clubs, and if you're the Vice President of Education, if you're the President, or just your other officer team, your leadership team, really let those numbers sink in, and then reflect on your own club. What's your standard? Getting back to standing up, what's your standard? Are you on the high jump? Or your standard of excellence is the pole vault? Carolyn Arthur, I'm sorry, Pat Martin, who was a past district governor. Charles knows her very well. He's a past district governor. Charles, what did Pat used to say about it's not the... Uh, do you remember? Carol, I'm sorry, Carol. What did she used to say? It's not the what? It's not the minimum, but the maximum. It's not the minimum, it's the maximum. So it's not striving for perfection, ladies and gentlemen. It's striving for excellence. Because the more that we go, the more we grow. The more that we go, the more that we go. Grow. Because we continually learn. In Japan, there's a name for that. It's called Kaizen. 
Is most everyone familiar with that? Constant never ending improvement. Well, I want to share this Japanese phrase with you. It's called Shogai Gakushu. Shogai Gakushu. And literally translated, that means we become lifelong learners. Because we can never learn less as Toastmasters. Right, Keith? We can always learn more. So to Charles and Carol Arthur, when she said, it's not about the minimum, it's about the maximum. So think about your personal standard and what you stand for. Are you standing for excellence? If you're the president of your club and you're up there and you're speaking to membership and talking about excellence, and yet, quite realistically, if you haven't perhaps completed a CC, or perhaps you haven't completed a CL, but you're saying, you know what, Kush, you really need to complete your CL. And out of the 21 or 22 projects in the CL manual, they've completed three. Are you on the five-year plan or the 10-year plan? He said in his session about this being a self-paced program, but you're not in it by yourself, are we? And when you think about all the talent, all the brain power that we have sitting in the room this afternoon, when we connect, we communicate, and we collaborate with one another, fantastic things can happen, can't it? Because we're drawing on each other's experience and our knowledge base. Charles Brooks, you can learn a tremendous amount from him. You can learn a tremendous amount from Ivan Gwen, who's a double DTM. There's so much talent in District 30, it's infinite the amount of things that you can tap into to really help your toast semester experience. And you just have to do one simple thing. Does anyone know what that is? Can you tell me? Show up. Show up, yes, but ask. Just ask. How can I help you? How may I serve you? Because to lead, when we get into leadership, to lead is to serve. Especially in this organization, is to serve. So stand up. When you stand up, again, the knowledge, the information, you have all, this, all these things, but you have to take action on it. Because if you don't do anything with the information, or if you don't share it with anyone, if you don't implement it, because it's like New Year's resolutions. It's not that New Year's resolutions or goals or objectives, targets don't work. It's what? Implementation, execution. So you come to all these sessions and you get all this information, but if you never go back and you never do anything with it, you never execute, you never take action on it, it's basically the information is useless. It really is. And even if you just take away one nugget, just one nugget that can help you personally, that can help your club, that can help your members, was that worth the investment of your time? Yeah. It's just like when we give evaluations, we give feedback. If I say to you, let me tell you 10 things you can do to improve your next speech. How many of those do you think he's going to really remember? Can he hang his hat on those 10 things or no? But if I give him one or two praise points that he can really use and act on for that speech or another speech, who knows what can happen? So take action. Speak up. This is my favorite portion of it. Does anyone ever have a challenge? And please be honest with me. Anyone ever have a challenge of getting your members to get up and give a speech? <laughs> you know? So we all have we all have that CC, that common challenge of getting our members <laughs> to give a speech. Because we all remember when we gave the icebreaker, right? Virginia Bosserman, who's a DTM and my facilitator, she said the show was faded, right, Jen? Had a heart attack. And almost had a heart attack. So we each had a different experience when we gave her icebreaker, but we survived, didn't we? Yeah. Because we were so fearful. Oh my God. What is Donna going to think about what I'm going to say? <laughs> Here's a news flash for you. 
You can't control what someone's going to think about you. And if you can, please share that with the rest of us. Because mind control, oh my God, how awesome would that be? So you really can't control. So you remember that first speech, your icebreaker. But just getting a member to get up and speak. And here's an interesting fact for you, is that when we, as Toastmasters, we get up to speak, did you know we position ourselves in the top 2% of the population? The top 2%. And even if you're not perfect, because none of us are perfect, we're all imperfectly perfect, right? Even if you're not great, even if you're not great, people will respect the courage it takes for you to stand up, speak up, and let your voice be heard. New Toastmaster, Toastmaster in the middle of the path, and even more seasoned Toastmaster like Charles Brooks. And Charles, I'm sure, will be the first to tell you He's constantly learning, constantly improving, constantly refining, constantly revising, and I know that he passes that on, that philosophy, to his members and the clubs that he belongs to. He who lives by that credo. Again, striving for excellence, not striving for perfection. So what would you do when you have a member that's reluctant, that's reserved, that's shy, that doesn't want to stand up? and doesn't want to speak up? Do we try and push and force them to get up and speak? No. Or do we become compassionate communicators? And we try to understand what's the experience that Marianne Reichel, that she wants out of Toastmasters? Do we know her why? Do we have any idea why she's here? So your leadership team of your clubs, and each one of you remember, you are a leader. But if you don't know why your individual members are there and what they want out of the experience, you've heard the expression, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there, right? <laughs> and you don't want it to lead to nowhere. You want it to lead to now here. So when you pull your members, we were talking about this in the President's training this morning, to fill out that member interest survey, that profile, and find out what do you want out of this thing called Toastmasters? And really dive into that, really dig into that. And then you can help your members figure out whether they're giving their icebreaker, number two, number 10, number 20, number 30, what they want out of the experience, and then we can encourage them, we can guide them, we support them, we can point the way. We can't make them. We can't motivate them. Because sometimes as Toastmasters, we get caught up in the Toastmaster trap. Well, I can motivate Frank Amos. Sorry, I can't motivate Frank Amos. I can inspire him. I can encourage him. I can be a mentor to him. But he has to do the work. He's the one that's responsible. We're all intelligent adults. So when you have a member that's reluctant to do that, just give them some compassionate guidance, support, and encouragement, whether it's the icebreaker, and just ask them different questions about where they work, their life experience, they have children, they travel, hobbies, whatever it might be. I know some of you already know this information. But if you'll take that approach to them, kind of a gentle, caring, nurturing, nourishing approach to it, I've been in enough clubs, visit enough clubs, that works. It really does. And just with a little bit of that dialogue and that communication, because Dr. Smelly also, communication is depositing a part of yourself in another person. So when you do that, you're depositing part of yourself in another Toastmaster member. Okay, speak up. Anybody's voice, sometimes like mine, ever quiver and have trepidation and anxiety because, again, we're trying to be, yes, Everybody, okay, I'm not alone, good. I was beginning to feel like I was the only one. But even when you're afraid, even when you have that fear, don't let the fear control you. Because it's okay, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters. 
Because if we're creating a culture and then the environment that we say we are, every time we read that club mission statement, we talk about supporting, positive, learning environment. And it should be positive, powerful, and uplifting. Create that kind of culture, that environment. Because we get enough of the negativity when we go to perhaps our workplaces. It could be with our family, with our friends. But in Toastmasters, it's all about positivity. It's all about us bringing out the best that we can be as Toastmasters. So even when you're shaking and even when you're quivering, that's the time to get out of your comfort zone and just gently step to the edge and just take that leap. And as my friend Virginia Wasserman says, nobody's going to die. Everybody's going to live to speak again and it's going to be okay. And if you don't like the outcome or the result, we can give the same speech again. Go to a different club, get in front of a different group, different audience, get different feedback. All kind of opportunities for us to do that. So even if your voice shakes, go ahead and have the courage to... For all the leaders in the room, I love this quote because I think it really epitomizes and it really sums up what we're all about as far as leaders. And there's different formal definitions of leadership, but I, I particularly like this one because John Quincy Adams, if your actions inspire others, he didn't say if your actions motivate others, he said if your actions inspire others to dream more. Everybody in the room have dreams, I hope. Sporty King, anybody know Sporty King in the room? Okay, a number of you. Sporty King was considered the acronym King. And he, he had to say it was kind of an indirect mentor of mine. And he had a saying about the word dream. And he said, dare recognize everyone as a messenger. Isn't that great? Dare recognize everyone as a messenger. So I hope you dream big dreams. Big, hairy, audacious dreams, goals, targets. But you dream more, you learn more, you do more, and you become more, you are a leader. And you don't need a title to be a leader. Even though you may not be an area director, division director, you know, be up in district leadership, each and every one of you can lead. Because you start leading yourself first before you can start leading others. If you could just recite this to me, because I want this to become sort of your mantra, and I'm going to read it first, and if we can all just say this together. I am great and bold, never quitting, I have a heart of gold. I lead by example, I show what I can do, show what to do. I empower people to be a team, not an I, and make them realize to follow their dreams. Can we just all in unison? endorse me and say this together. Ready? I am a leader. I'm great and bold. Never quitting. I have the heart of gold. I lead by example. I show what to do. I empower people to be a team and make them realize to follow their dreams. Please take that back with you. So where are you? So as you leave this session today, Analyze where are you, where do you need to be when you leave here today? Who do you want to be? What do you want to do? As a member of Toastmasters, as just an individual, like I am now, plain old Toastmaster, member of four different clubs, or as a leader of your club. Where on that scale between being a leader, team, and what are the goals? We could have a whole session, of course, about about goals. But where do you need to be? Where do you want your individual members to be? Where do you want your club to be? So when we come back together again a year from now, we are now 26 days into the new Toastmaster year. So if you haven't set your goals, your objectives by now, when would now be a good time? So think about that. Last thing, learn. You can never learn less in Toastmasters, you can always learn more. Helen Blanchard, who was the first female president of Toastmasters International, she just summed it up and she said it, I think, so eloquently 
She said, if you get all there is to get out of Toastmasters, you'll never get out of Toastmasters. Isn't that true? Yes. Because you realize there's just so much that you can take in, so much that you can learn. It's just, it's just truly amazing. So continue to be a lifelong learner. Show guy, got kushu. Show guy, got kushu. Lifelong learners. And this sums this up. Anyone who stops learning is old, either at 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. To me, this is the fountain of youth. Always be learning. Always be learning. And you'll never grow old. Robin Sharma. Everyone know who Robin Sharma is? He's wrote The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari, Leader with No Title, and he was, a, he was the Golden Gala recipient at Toastmaster International two years ago. And this, because we think about the four letter words, I can and I can't. Have a yes, I can is more important than your emotional or your intelligence quotient. Find reasons to say yes to your members. Find reasons to say yes to your club. And that will dramatically improve not only you personally, it will help your members, and it will help every aspect and every facet of your life. It's just have an I can is more important than your IQ. Guts, the last acronym I'm going to leave you with this afternoon is I'm not talking about physical guts. <laughs> I'm talking about a different kind of guts. And it has to do with courage. Because it takes courage for us to take that first step in Toastmasters, doesn't it? And to step up and give that first speech. Or to step up into leadership and to serve our members, our clubs, our district. But when you have the guts, again, you have all this information, all this knowledge, all this wisdom, everything that we share with one another. You have to go use this stuff. It only works if you work it. And so you know, if you see those commercials, you have that button. Well, here's the button I want you to use. I want you to go and use this stuff. If there's one idea this afternoon, one takeaway that's going to help you personally, professionally, help your members, help your clubs, email me, call me. I do answer my phone. And I love helping other members because this is the last thing I want to leave you with. One member does not make a club. Each of us need all of us, and it takes all of us for each of us to be successful because there is no success, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters, without me and without you. So take this back to your clubs, have a fantastic rest of your week, and I look forward to seeing many of you again at future meetings or another TRI. So Toastmasters, leave inspired this afternoon. Thank you. We have about 10 minutes if anybody has any questions for Jerry. Sharing time. Can you put the slide back on the I am a leader slide? I, I have a question. And you can be filling out your feedback form. Um, one question for you, Jerry. Yes. What is the most current struggle that you're going through right now as a leader or whatever? i just like you know to let everybody know. What is your okay. chief struggle fair, right fair now? Question. Everybody hear Tim's question? No. Tim, you want to repeat it? What is your chief struggle right now in Toastmasters? I am somewhat of a perfectionist, and I've had to get over that, because you know how we have expectations of our members? And I think, well, Sandra should be farther along in her CC or farther along with her CL or whatever educational award she's striving for. And I have to remind myself that Sandra, my expectation <coughs> may not be Sandra's expectation. So I have to meet Sandra or any other member of my clubs at the level that they're at and at the pace that they're at. 
because I'll guide them, I'll support them, I'll encourage them, mentor them, anything that I can do to help them. But I also have to remember to keep in mind what their, expect their expectation is and remind myself to be patient and understanding and compassion with that number. Because it's not you know, what we expect, it's what we inspect and knowing what does that person want out of the experience. <coughs> so I really have to be, you know, for me, more aware of that. And of course, the usual stuff that we all face the common challenges of, you know, getting media agendas filled, getting people to sign up for roles, and people dropping out at the last minute. Now, we know that never happens. You know, all the common stuff. So thank you for that question, Tim. Okay. Yes. I Someone else have why did it become a mirror of Turnatan and why did it become a member of Turnatan Rear? Right? Why did I become a member of Turnatan Rear? No, no. Why, why did the people who never become a mirror of Turnatan Rear? Why did the Rear? Uh, do then become a leader on keep a goal of turning? Why do you become a goal of, yeah, because a keep a goal of becoming a turn after? Why is it a goal? I think he's asking why is it a goal to become a toast? Yeah. Why is it a goal or a leader of fear or a um, goal? Leader. A leader. A leader. A leader. A leader. Right. The goal Why is be a goal leader in Toastmasters. To become a leader in Toastmasters. To serve others. To serve others. To serve others. To be a servant. To be a servant to others. Because when we help one another, and again, you don't need to have a title to do that. But when we do step up in the leadership, it's all about service. To be in service of another person. Because Sporty, Ke I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Johnny Campbell. Does everybody know who Johnny Campbell is? He was yeah. doing. He was doing a session at a conference. And he, he said, I love this, because he said, I can tell you what your purpose is in three words. And everybody's like, OK, Johnny, tell us, tell us. What's my purpose? He says, you really want to know what your purpose is? And you're like, yes, yes, yes. He said, simply to serve others, to be in the service of others. Because to lead is to serve. And how we do that, everybody's got a different style. And, but it's basically to keep what's in the best interest of our members and how we can serve them the best. Because that's one of the reasons that I learned that I learned when I stepped into leadership, it was again about serving my members. How could I help them grow? How could I help them learn and get to the next level? All right. Okay, what other, any other questions? One other question? On behalf of District 30, we'd like to present you with the certificate of gratitude and for all your service and preparation and you still have 20 minutes to 19 minutes to get to your next session so if you'd like to stay and ask Jerry some questions I'm sure he would be happy to accommodate so thank you